Hello everyone, I'm uh, Hong Xing Liu from the uh, Department of Ge uh, Geography. Uh, okay, so my teaching and research uh, in this area is mainly remote sensing. I do uh, many different types of remote sensing, that's including multispectral, hyperspectral radar, LIDAR, altimetry, and a passive microwave. That's uh, kind of a primary tools I'm using to do remote sensing. In terms of uh, Application area mainly kind of water related. That's including remote sensing for rivers and the lakes. That's basically it's just kind of a surface water. And also in the previous, I did a lot of kind of research for remote sensing uh, polar glaciers and ice sheets. That's include also including snow. And for some part, parts of my previous work, also do a remote sensing of a coast zone. That's related to a coast habitat aquaculture and uh, coast erosion really to kind of shoreline change. <coughs> so today I, I want to focus on this area. This is mainly in you know, the kind of activity related to uh, the Cairo type of research. So first the kind of sub area I wanted to introduce that's uh, for, flood, uh, for flood mapping and hydrologic modeling parts. So the, this works that currently and funded by in the Cairo, the project led by Sagi, and also we have the ones of Pandi that's related to this flood mapping. Uh, my role for this uh, product uh, mainly develop uh, you know, algorithm software, eventually utilizing multi sensor remote sensing data to produce high resolution historical flood maps. So for this part, you know, so previously we did uh, quite a bit of work. Actually, already we have uh, one of uh, standalone software tool, you know, to so do kind of flood mapping. Basically, you know, this kind of tool can <laughs> take uh, multiple different type of data sources. That's including in you know, optical uh, remote sensor data or SAR remote sensor data. That actually, also including lidar data. Eventually. You know, do kind of processing, use algorithm, and then pr produce a flood mapping. Uh, so here it just shows one kind of, kind of example. You know, using you know star imagery, you know, do processing, use as tools that can quickly you know do classification, eventually get a vector products in terms of flooded area. And also, so now a reason we start to explore using. Google Earth Engine do a kind of a cloud-based uh, flood mapping. Basically, we want to do something kind of very similar to cloud uh, cloud street type stuff. Just giving you know kind of a certain time periods and then kind of area. We're using you know say available satellite data to do quickly flooding. So here, just show one example using Centennial One imagery. You know, data kind of for flooding mapping for Louisiana in the 2016. This is just kind of trying to use in kind of a machine learning, deep learning algorithm, but it, that's kind of a preliminary <coughs> results. But overall for this uh, flooding parts in terms of remote sensing data, you know, so the best remote sensing data now is available. That's uh, you know, in terms of optical, that's many but mainly in optical sensor, if you have a near infrared band, that's very good for flood mapping. But the other parts that's uh, you know, so now use increasingly using synthetic uh, aperture that's called star. That's you know, what's the most available now. That's uh, called Centennial One. There is two satellite Centennial One A and B. B is now the dad. So one A still operating because that one's the star data is not influenced by clouds, is not influenced by <coughs> basically they can do mapping day and night. Uh, the other parts in the for actually as this part in this progress also we wanted to expanding the flooding mapping from only in a flood extent also we wanted to try do a flood depth and the duration analysis. So here is just showing one example. We did, uh, actually we did in a many, many years earlier, 
that's uh, <laughs> that's you you using that's the kind of airborne light idea that did a kind of flooding mapping for in the sea, uh, Houston area. It, as you can see, using high resolution light data, that's kind of this is one meter spatial resolution. But eventually, we can get uh, precise uh, water depth information. All this kind of water depth information that previously we validated we, from in situ water marks data. Uh, yeah, I guess this is kind of very briefly. That's for this uh, flooding parts. The other portion, now you know, see my group's also doing remote sensing of uh, river flow velocity and the discharge. So this these uh, parts of research uh, that's uh, supported by one of recent, uh, you know, uh, grounds from a uh, NASA SWAT program, you know, collaborating with uh, Sergey and other, others on this uh, the product. So for, for this part, so basically, portion, we want to use in dual remote sensing to derive two-dimensional flow velocity fields uh, for, you know, say, river flow. And the other portion, basically, here, and the plus, uh, kind of more for the type por parts, wanted to support the SWAT satellite program. Basically, we do a kind of validation, large kind of algorithm development. So for this part, uh, in the say, uh, there's mainly uh, my uh, students, uh, Rupesh is working on this part. Actually, we got the pretty good preliminary results. In the early years, uh, uh, the camera are already used for mapping as uh, flow velocity. Basically, it's, uh, in a Traditional ways that you install a kind of camera on a bridge or on the bank, you take the video, uh, video for river flow, and eventually do a kind of tra you know tracking, tracing, get velocity. But now, you know, so we are trying to use a drone remote sensing because this is much more flexible. You know, for large kind of area, physically, that's uh, difficult to get access. We can use in the drone remote sensor. There is lots kind of advantage. Use a drone versus you using a kind of fixed station. But anyway, so so you know, so, uh, Rupesh basically you know, so doing his master thesis, uh, you know, we uh, <coughs> acquired a lot of data in you know, for Black Warrior River and uh, Kahaba River, and also did some parts for uh, Tom Bigby. Uh, we are used both in you know, a RGB natural color uh, you know, video camera. Also, we use a uh, NRR near infrared camera. Uh, so here, I just showing the one example that's actually you know this cross uh, in the Black Warrior. You know, we he take, take kind of a video camera uh, imagery. So very high resolution, about a uh, you know, two centimeter spatial resolution, and then. Using that's basically tracking algorithm. That's this technique is called uh, the particle image uh, velocimetry technique. But eventually, get the two-dimensional flow fields, and and then all these kind of fields, we also did some kind of a ground truthing using, you know, the auto autonomous surface uh, work mount. Uh, equipped by uh, with uh, ADCP, that's the uh, acoustic adopter uh, cloud of profile. But this is just giving you a you know straight <laughs> vertical cross section velocity and the symmetry, and eventually can do a validation. So the idea is uh, you know re related to this SWOT, uh, the product not funded by NASA. You know basically we want to using what we get from uh, ADCP and also from drone to provide ground truth data to validate you know, a SWAT satellite. A SWAT satellite is a very new in you know, a satellite mission that's just launched uh, launched in you know, next year December 16. So this is kind of first hour survey or first hour satellite mission which is going to provide it is the most uh, useful hydrological information. Basically, you know, so what this setup is very special. That, that's basically they're using interferometry, using two in you know, radar antenna, use carbon, 
when the satellite overpass the area, they can generate two huge swaths. Each side is 50 kilometers. So within the 50 kilometers, it can get a very precise uh, elevation value, especially on, on the surface of water. So basically, they, they designed carbon. They can get surface water uh, elevation. So based on the elevation, virtually along the river, they also can derive you know, what surface slope and also how wide is the river actually for f if it's flooded also they can mapping flooded area but based on all this you know using kind of uh, optimization techniques they do kind of hydrological you know mod <laughs> modeling eventually can derive discharge value for global river v virtually the idea for this uh, the program they're going to provide a global measurements for all the river as long as wider than 100 meter. So that's that's kind of a mission. So they they just get in the first actually you know because of, in the past uh, the months this satellite is still you know do kind of testing validation, but now they start to acquire the data. So that's that's a part for river flow and the discharge. <laughs> The third, third area I'm working on that's mainly related to kind of river channel morphology and the basimetry. So th this product actually is also highly, high, this part's also highly related to my NASA uh, SWAT, uh, SWAT project. And, and also we have the ones of Pandy, uh, Carol project. You know, this one, Basically, my my parts for the the this pending portion that's mainly the using airborne lidar deal with uh, river channel morphology and also using you know <coughs> uh, multispectral hyperspectral imagery and plus a laser altimetry to get river basimetry. Just quickly, you know, basically the kind of a previous work we are, what we are trying to do uh, ri river channel morphology is very important for 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 flooding mapping, modeling, lots of stuff. Basically, that's including the cross-section information and also platform information. And the, in the deal with the river system, also we need to topology information for the river. You know, previously, traditionally, the space is just using ground survey, you know, all the kind of manual way to get information. But actually, especially with the high resolution airborne <coughs> LiDAR system, and the, we can get one meter spatial resolution of topography. But now, with the drone system, actually, for the topography, we can get uh, around a few centimeter level of uh, uh, topography information. So based on this uh, in a LiDAR information, actually, we can automatic, uh, automate it, this cross-section information. So here is some kind of work we did, as pre uh, did previously. Basically, we are trying to, in the first uh, we are trying to you know, conceptualize a possible cross-section on this, ri this river. And then based on this conceptualization, you know, we can define you know, some, some what we call critical points along the cross-section. For example, here we have the shoulder. And once you define the shoulder, basically you can you know, get so-called back for river weight source kind by of information. So you know, once you have, you understand the, Different types of river cross section, and then you know easily you you know you can calculate uh, this uh, you know along the cross section. For example, the, this type of real observation, you can calculate first the derivative, second derivative, curvature, all type of stuff. Based on all the property, easily you can you know so determine all type of stuff. Here it just shows that, you know we we develop kind of software tool. Along this river channel, we can search in quickly find out all the kind of critical points. Eventually, can mapping based on the LiDAR data, we can mapping as cross section information. So here just shows one example. You know, basically here, you know, we get LiDAR. It's so very detailed. As you can see, it's very detailed. One, one meter spatial resolution. But if we do here shading, all the kind of feature you can see quite clearly. And using hydro uh, hydro hydrological methods. We can easily to derive digital 
strip network get topography uh, topology information. Now based on the topology information, and then we do in a kind of searching cross section, do this kind of computation here, but quickly get all this kind of China, bank for China mapped. So that's a part so just a kind of idea. You know, so for this project, you know, if funded for the pending one, that's uh, you know what we are going to do. Reason because the uh, U.S. nationwide already have a LiDAR coverage. The one meter, uh, one meter resolution data, almost every state. USGS now combine all the kind of LiDAR data to produce a three meter spatial resolution. So this type of thing, that should be doable. But the other portions we are using laser altimetry. You know, for, for the basimetry portion, that's, uh, that's more difficult for, for reverb. The reason, because lots kind of river because of two debate, and then you know, to, that's the only thing the uh, adjuncts way if you're using sounding, you know, acoustics, no problem. But if you use a remote sensing, that's always difficult. So here, you know, I just shown some kind of example. If the water conditions are not too bad, but still it's possible using remote sensing. So here shows one example is using laser altimetry. That's a wonderful, wonderful new satellite that's launched in 2016. It's called iSat2. That's kind of using quite, quite in you know, a high resolution laser altimetry. Basically, what they do is, you know, they, you know, so along this track, they are sending as a laser photons. You know, for example, here, you know, for either lake or river, channel, you know, so if water conditions are not too bad, they are going to get a two different response. The ones on the top of a river, and then that's the bottom. And then basically, you, if, once you get such type of thing, easily, you know, if you deal with the data, you know, for each, each vertical, vertical cross section, you basically you get two mode. So one, wraps on the surface, that's one wraps on the bottom. And then by calculating this distance, you get water depth. So actually this works, actually, you know, I will show the one example, you know, we tried. But the other thing is using imagery, you know, either using multispectral or hyperspectral imagery. So basically there is kind of physical law, you know, eventually we do inversion. Basically, if we have kind of multispectral imagery for different them, because they have different Attenuation and you use that uh, <laughs> wavelength dependent attenuation. Eventually, you can inverse to get the depth information. So here just shows one example. You know, we did this. This this just kind of, kind of river channel, but some portion become ponded uh, water. This that's uh, it's called Centennial Two uh, multispectral imagery. So that's including, you know, say kind of visible band and also near infrared band. So use this one, we can find out relative depths, you know, using this equation. But to convert the absolute depths, we need some kind of ground truth. For example, here, you know, it just happened, I said the two pass through this one. So this portion, I said the two pass it here. So I'm using these methods, basically just get depth information. So use the depth correlated with smart spectral imagery using this model, but eventually we just uh, can invert, invert to get uh, the basimetry information. That's kind of idea used uh, to deal with uh, you know, the basimetry parts, no matter river channel or lakes or the coastal area, that's uh, commonly, you know, so that's kind of methodology used for this uh, channel. So that's the parts for <laughs> reward channel. Next portion, I just want to, you know, briefly introduce what we did for, you know, surface water availability security type of research, so mainly by observing lake water level and the storage. A, you know, for surface water for storage, so mainly there's a lake, the reservoir, in the ponds, you know, actually for some parts, of, that's really to kind of wetland. So that's very important part. So, but the technique we use, the basically we use in satellite radar and the laser altimetry. So for this part, you know, we previously we did uh, quite quite uh, you know quite a bit of research. But you know, so currently what we are working on is that's uh, also funded by one of recent uh, NASA severe the program. 
So for this program, basically we are using this kind of series of satellite radar and the laser altimetry, trying to monitoring, you know, what level and storage change in the Great Lakes region of Eastern and Southern Africa. It is my students, Jawas, basically for his dissertation, already did some kind of preliminary work. So overall, you know, for these areas, you know, say, is this also called Great Lakes? That's kind of a it, somehow here we have North America Great Lakes. In Africa, they have Great Lakes in, in this region. So there is a lot of lakes there, and especially one one lake called Lake Victoria. That's the second largest in the world. Uh, there is lots of issue because here you you know the Africa. You know if a, in the most of the case have a drought, say, but some situation also get a too much water flooding. Okay, so 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 it is. That's very important to monitoring this kind of a change. So the technique we use, the basically using series of altimetry observation. That's virtually in you know, the first one's called geosat. This one, the data as quality is not good. Let's start with uh, this uh, satellite in 1992. Let's continue now. Still, multiple altimetry sensors working. Virtually, you can get. Uh, you know, say so in the past thirty years of long term records. You know, here just showing one example actually we, we did all the multiple major lakes and then use the ultimately get this kind of change. From this kind of change, the one thing that definitely you can you know monitoring how water availability is changing. But the other thing given it's a long time series, also you can do trend analysis, uh, seasonality analysis, uh, find out the drivers for this uh, water availability issue. But anyway, so that last portion, let's say the parts we do are freshwater quality mapping and monitoring. So currently the two in the, in the funded project supporting this part of research, the one that's from uh, Water Research Foundation, but the other portion that's a NASA, that's a severe program, parts also deal with water quality. And also we have the one of a pending USGS product, basically that's mainly deal with uh, targeting water quality type stuff. So overall, you know, say fresh water is so important, but it, that's experiencing globe degradation. That's the last kind of problem. You know, major, major issue, I guess now, most people know there is a kind of serious H H HAB issue. And besides this one, I guess some also emphasize the uh, nutrients loading, that's called eutrophication, and the plus all the type of stuff uh, that's kind of high stability. That's also because of the quality is also influencing water availability and the security. So traditional techniques, that's two different ways. One thing, they just install kind of a uh, long-term station. Yeah, this one's good, you know, basically they can get a continuous high temporal resolution data, but problems are very expensive, can, they can only have a very sparse observation. But the other way, just do kind of more like a field survey type of stuff, you know, use a kind of boat, they can simply mop area, but still it's quite expensive, and plus, uh, you know, so in terms of time, that's very sporadic. So to do this uh, water quality remote sensing at large scale, long term, let's say, you know, remote sensing is the way to go. So just quickly, you know, explain how remote sensing can do water quality. So water quality, for do water quality remote sensing, mainly use an optical remote sensor. So optical remote sensor, <coughs> you know, either multispectral by band or hyperspectral band. Basically, you know, all the kind of bio uh, optical property, you know, kind of constitutes in the water. If we use a sensor recorded, but all the information will be coded into the image. That's called a spectral information. Especially if you have a multispectral the data, that means you get a detailed spectral signature in on this uh, your your data and using uh, actually as you can see here, you know, if uh, chlorophyll concentration 
is different, the curve different, that picks a value combination with different. Similar thing, you know, for sediments, concentration different, and then here is different. So basically, we try to figure out algorithm inversion to get, figure out what's, what, what, what quality, the property. So overall, so now you know, use the most often, especially for river and river and the lakes, we need too high resolution. So use the most often now the best data sets called Santander 2, A and B. That's basically they're repeating every 10 day, 10 days for each satellite, but eventually every five day because of two satellites. So here's land set, that's the second best. That's repeating cycles 16 days, but eventually 8 days. All these two combined together, you can get something like every three or five days, you get, get the data. Uh, besides this one, you also can use high resolution stuff, but this is not free. So that's set up the parts. But the other portion, just definitely, if you use a drone, you can get even much better data. But data. Actually, now, you know, my groups do a lot of say using different, different, you know, for example, here we have a, you know, 10 band mega sensor system, and also we have a, hyperspectral uh, the drone system. So you use this you know overall the processing you know to get all the different water quality parameter. You know two parts are very important. One thing you know internal processing that's atmospheric correction, but the other portion inversion models. Inversion models previous technique one of the major things that you need a kind of calibration, need a you know, ground truth data, but once calibrated they, they only can using where is the calibrated? Or when is the calibrated? Basically, there is no spatial transferability or temporal repeatability. So one, one of our major kind of progress in the past years, we developed one technique it's called ensemble deep learning technique. So this deep learning technique eventually works so, so where, you know, say, once you get a model, actually they can use a, you know, say, Regionally, you, know, you, you calibrate on this lake, they can use on the other lake. You, you calibrate for today, uh, this year, they can use the uh, trace back, you know, all in the future. So this, uh, uh, after you is uh, in applied for US patent for us, actually just proved this year. That's after two years uh, application. But anyway, here is the show saying from that one, you know, we calibrate for one lake, but applied to the other one, this works in terms of you know, it's a IG Bloom monitoring. But similar thing, you know, for, you know, we did a kind of calibration for this uh, Moby River basin. We are using calibration sites around the confluence area between Black Warrior and the Big Tom B. But this calibration model used for entire watershed. We did a you know, kind of validation, got very high accuracy that uh, works.